everyone. This is Skein 12 of the All Wound Up podcast. I'm Lauren Ray Romero, and it is Saturday, August 10th, 2019. It's been about a month since I last recorded for you. Um, not a lot has happened. If you can tell, I got my lights working again. Um, so that's really... Um, pretty fantastic. If you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. If you're somebody new, thank you for checking me out. If you like what you see and want to see more, please like this video and subscribe to my channel down below. You can find me on social media on Instagram as lore.romero and on Ravelry because I'm still with Ravelry as Mistral. Um, yeah, so since the last podcast, some stuff has happened, but not a whole lot. Um, I've had a whole bunch of migraines, like back to back. Um, I do get them chronically. I have recorded podcasts with them because there's no avoiding it. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's not a fun condition to have. And yeah, so uh, I've had a whole bunch of them. Also, since the last podcast, my kittens got neutered. So they were walking around for about a week, almost 10 days, actually, in their little cones of shame. And they were so cute, but they're finally free. So if they come this way, I'll show them off again because they are adorable. Uh, but they're busy doing kitten things. So you might hear a couple bangs and crashes uh, while I record because I don't want to lock them out of the room because then I can't watch what they're doing. So I do have a finished object, even though I've not been feeling so great. Um, what I have to show you, I showed you as a whip last time, and I actually finished it right after I finished recording the podcast and was like, oh, hmm. because I could have just waited and recorded a little bit later, but that's okay. So this is the Ripple Bralette by Jessie May Designs, Jessie Made Designs, sorry. And it is knit out of Lola Bean yarn in the Bean Sprout base, on the Bean Sprout base, in the Nymphadora Tonks colorway. And I really like how this yarn pulled. I like that it did this sort of micro striping technique. Um, and I kind of want to use the other half of the skein to make a hat because I feel like it will pull similarly on a project with that diameter. And I want to wear that. So this is um, the first ever garment that I finished for an adult who was not myself. You can see the edge up there. I don't want to show my friend's kid off on TV, but I made a little dress for a one-year-old to wear or a seven-month-old to wear. And that was the only other garment that I've ever gifted to anybody. I've given hats and scarves. So this is a pretty big deal for me, even though it's not a very big project. It's a gifted garment. And that's like a milestone for me in my knitting journey. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get this in the mail. I finally found a post office that has a parking lot that's close to me. So I can mail packages and things without having to walk a half mile carrying those packages. And that's fantastic. I know you can arrange a pickup from your postal worker, your mailman. Um, but we have, I've talked about him before, the big 150 pound English bull mastiff who lives downstairs. And um, a lot of times the mail carrier here just tosses packages up onto the porch from the sidewalk because he doesn't want to come inside. Even though the dog is really, really friendly, obviously the mail carrier has to protect himself and he doesn't come in. So I don't want to set up a pickup and then have it sit for days and days. So. Yeah, now I can finally go to the post office. I do have another knitting adjacent finished object to share. Um, last time I talked about having my enamel pins on my notions pouch. This is my notions pouch. It's actually just a makeup bag that I bought a few years ago at Target and it happened to be exactly the right size. So I have all my pins on there or I had all my pins on there, but it was starting to get full as you can see. So I left some of my favorites on here and then I went to the craft store and this is not my idea. Um, I did see people selling these and I decided that I would try to do a version of it myself. Um, but I took eight inch embroidery hoops and I took some felt from Michaels. Uh, so this whole thing itself cost like $5 and I made some hoops and what I can do with these filled hoops is I can take 
my enamel pins and I can put them on there and then I'm going to hang them. I'm not sure if I'm going to hang them on the radiator cover because I can hang things on there. I checked with my landlady. They don't get too hot. And, um, or if I'm going to hang them up over the sock blanks behind me, but super simple project and it's going to let me show off my enamel pins without having to buy a whole new notions pouch. So that's pretty, um, exciting. I thought about putting them on a project bag, but I've heard that they can get caught in your yarn if you don't have, um, all the safe pin backs on them. And I also said, well then if I have them on one project bag, if I'm not working on a project that's in that project bag, then I can't see them. So I decided that I would do something that would allow me to display them in my home. So these are my knitting, whoop, my knitting related pins um, on here. And then on this one, I have non knitting related pins that I love. And this is one of my favorites, which is why I put it on here because I don't ever, ever want to lose it. This is a little cat from Barcelona. So that was really special. Suzanne and Thaddeus brought that back for me and it makes me really happy. So he's on there so that I don't ever lose him because he's irreplaceable. But um, yeah, so I'm going to display those in here in my yarn room slash office slash guest bedroom slash spare room slash storage space. And this way I'll be able to look at them all the time and not have to worry about losing them or buying a new project bag to put pins on. So yeah, I only have one work in progress this week because, or this month, this episode, this game because I haven't been feeling so hot and I've also been really, really tunnel vision on this project. Um, it's really made me very happy to work on. So it's almost done and then I'll have to move on to finishing up another whip because this is my summer of finishing things. Um, this is in a, an utterly adorable knits large size drawstring project bag. This is a five skein project and it fits in there. There's still extra room. At this point, the skeins are tiny, but um, the project has gotten really large. So this is the fading point by Hohi Locatelli. And this thing gets to be about nine feet by three feet when it's finished. So it is massive. Um, I'm knitting this and I'll focus on one side. I'm knitting this in the Zeus on the Zeus space from Trey Liz Colors Power Yarns, and I absolutely love. Hang on, I'm trying to get it. There we go. I absolutely love how it is turning out. I love how deep and rich each color is, and it's so much fun to knit this. I'm finding with this shawl construction, this is the second time I've worked on a shawl with this construction, you don't hit the shawl wall. You, the most number of stitches you end up with is about 175 ballpark. And um, after you finish knitting your two sections of 175 stitches, it decreases instead of increasing. So you never end up hitting a point where you're like, oh my God. I have 300 stitches on the needle and my life is over because each row takes an hour. You never get to that point and I absolutely love it. So this is the Aloha Mora Fade Kit from Trey Liz and it is, each colorway is named for Harry Potter characters and I'll show you the little pieces that I have left of each skein instead of trying to hold up this giant shawl. So the first colorway is Sirius Black. And that's only on the ends of the shawl. Then we move into Rubius Hagrid. Really tiny now. Rubius Hagrid. Then it is Severus Snape. Hang on. Three and four look very close. Severus Snape. Whoop. Runaway yarn. Severus Snape. Then Remus Lupin. And 
and finally the one that's attached to the shawl right now because I'm starting my second side triangle Albus Dumbledore so I mean in addition to the fact that it's absolutely beautiful yarn I'm nuts for Harry Potter and um, when I saw this fade online I knew I had to have it and I waited almost a month before I bought it and I have no regrets about this so this shawl sat in hibernation for about six months maybe a little bit less maybe more like four months um, no six months but when I picked it up again it flew um, I've been really monogamously knitting on it even though it's ginormous when I went out to a sit in it I still brought it with me um, it's so much fun so as I said this is a fun construction so you knit each half separately so you knit up to the center on one and then you knit up to the center on the other and then you join them so what you can see right here by my face is the first side triangle um, that you knit and then you knit a second one down here and it joins together into a giant rectangle I am in love I almost want to make a second one. That's how much I've enjoyed knitting this. I don't usually re-knit shawls, but um, I want to. So we'll see. Probably not because I will. I don't know that I'll ever get a fade this perfect again. But um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I've seen people knit them in a monochromatic color scheme, um, and I almost want to try that. I don't have the, that quantity of yarn in anything, but like a commercial acrylic um, so I'd have to wait until I got a lot of yarn it's like 2,000 yards almost 2,000 yards of yarn for this project um, but I absolutely love it and I'm going to wear this so much because I just love the colors I love that grello thing and I know that might be basic and trendy or whatever but I absolutely love it so um, that's my main whip. That's my only whip that I've made any progress on. I did not work on my Pagona. I did not work on my My Duo. Just this. So, yeah. It's been a lot of fun to work on. And I can't wait to make my next shawl that uses this construction because Hohe has another pattern that uses it. And I can't remember what it's called. I never remember what it's called, but I have it saved in my favorites. Um, so yeah, fading point. Super fun knit. If you were considering it, you totally should do it. Okay. Um, because I only have one active whip, I'm going to talk about what my next cast on will probably be. And I know that I said I was going to mostly finish things this summer, and then I cast on the My Duo shawl, and now I'm talking about casting on something else. But my goal is to... Um, have this as a work in progress that I can work on at um, professional developments and um, faculty meetings after school um, because having something in my hands that I'm fidgeting with a lot of you know this because you're knitters um, it really helps me to focus and it helps me to retain more information and as of right now my assistant principal and principal seem okay with it so I'm gonna go with it so my next cast on is going to come from this book refined knits by Jennifer Wood I had the opportunity to meet her at Rhinebeck, I think two years ago at this point, maybe three. Um, she was very nice. She signed the book for me, which is exciting. Um, and I'm going to cast on a sweater for myself. And what I'm going to knit um, is going to be the Victoria pullover. And if you see, if you can see, it has um, lace work on the front panel like in the in the yoke and then it also has lace work on the sleeves let me see if I can find a picture of that without showing off too much of the pattern yeah you can see it on this page right here and I'll use my show notes to cover up the pattern so if you take a look right here oh, right here you can see that it's got these beautiful um, lace triangles on the shoulders as well as in the yoke so I'm going to be casting that on for myself with the hope that I can finish it in time to wear it for Christmas. We get a little bit dressy for Christmas and I'd like to be able to wear that with maybe a black pencil skirt. So that will be knit in 
groovy hues, fibers, yakin and groovin in the sanguinary sanguinarian delight colorway. And um, yeah, I absolutely love this pattern. I've been meaning to knit it since I got the book. It's the whole reason I bought the book was for that sweater. There's a lot of beautiful patterns in there, but that sweater was the one that I said, I'm going to knit this. I'm going to buy the book. Um, yeah, so I'm definitely going to be casting that on. I'm really excited. So this is Yakin and Groovin and Sanguinary and Delight. It's kind of an oxblood color. And it is a Yak Merino Nylon Blend. So this will be nice and warm to wear at Christmas time. I'm very excited. Um, what I'm going to do so that it becomes mindless knitting is I'm going to knit down through the yoke, the triangular lace piece that's in the front. I'm going to do the sleeves and then I'm just going to have the body to knit which is mostly stockinette so that I'm able to take it with me and just knit in the round easy um, I feel like that will be a good way to get going I'm going to deliberately start it and pause it and that way I will have it available as a mindless knit so that I'm doing something constructive instead of just making something that I cast on only so that I have a space time killer so that's going to be my next cast on really excited about it it's been something that I've been thinking about knitting for a long time and I'm hoping that also by casting on by knitting the sleeves first I'm able to make the sweater maybe slightly longer because I won't have to worry about saving yarn for the sleeves so I'll be able to use up the three skeins I don't know if I'll need them but we'll see um, yeah very excited i'm going to cast that on hopefully i'll have progress on that to show you by the next time i record maybe not maybe i'll just be working on whips that are languishing because i have full project bags everywhere like it's kind of embarrassing how many projects i have just sitting in project bags around my apartment there i have a chair in the living room that has a basket under it it's full I have a basket next to my couch that has project bags in it, full. I have off to the side over here by my needles, project bags, full. Um, so while I might love to just go and shop and buy new project bags so that I can cast on more things, I know that that's not really um, <laughs> the best thing to do in terms of finishing stuff. So hopefully I finish more than just this one big shawl this summer. Um, and I can clear out some space. Maybe I'll go back to my find your fade and see if I can finish it. Um, hopefully I will. The plan is to finish it. It's still active. I didn't rip it out. So hopefully it gets finished one day. All right. Acquisitions. So, um, I was online browsing Facebook as you do. And Beach Bum Yarns, Gina from Beach Bum Yarns, made a post that she was going to be sending out extras with her cocktail-themed yarns. And I was like, extras? What extras? And she said, oh, I'm going to send out tiki straws. I have not yet opened it. There it goes. <laughs> She's going to send out tiki straws with her cocktail-themed yarns. I am a sucker. Gina, I don't know why this makes me so happy, but it does. So I've got my cocktail straw, and this is one straw we don't have to worry about ending up in the landfill because it's going to hang out in my stash because it makes me so happy. <laughs> the little things. So I bought a sock kit, which will probably become a shawl because I'm me. Um, this is the Blue Lagoon. Hang on. Blue Lagoon Tiki Bar Set on Santa Barbara Sock, which is an 80-20 sock base with a high twist. And it is two skeins. Well, a skein and a mini. The first one is kind of natural with splashes of pastels and brights. And then the accent skein is a bright green mini. Um, so I know that this is supposed to be heels, toes, and cuffs, and this is supposed to be the sock but it might turn out to be a shawl with a cool stripe. Um, again, because I know who I am as a knitter, but maybe it'll be socks. I'm not sure. Um, 
I thought the yarn was beautiful, and then when I heard I got an extra, I had to indulge. Um, awesome marketing, Chloe Gina. Awesome. Um, yeah, so beach bum yarn. This is my first time I've ever purchased beach bum yarn. I've looked at it before. Um, I always say, oh, I want that so badly. And then um, the mini skein and the umbrella straw were enough to push me over. So my first beach bum yarn purchase. Again, because of Facebook, maybe I should stay off Facebook and my mental health and my wallet would thank me. I was browsing in a group and this came up. This is done by Dietastic Yarn. It's her Frida colorway. Um, it's inspired by one of Frida's many self portraits. And it is on her merino sock base. It's 100% merino. And I just loved the colors and had to purchase some so that I could have it in my stash. This is almost certainly going to become a one skein shawl. Almost certainly, almost 100%. That's what I'm doing with this because I absolutely love the colors and I want to see how they pool and play. My next purchases are from Groovy Hues Fibers. Um, again, Facebook. So we have a mutual friend, Marina, who makes um, buttons, beautiful, beautiful buttons and pendants carved out of stone and fordite and wood and antler and pretty much anything that she can take a dremel to and make something beautiful. Um, she has a knack for attracting people who have very interesting personalities. So at some point, um, somebody made a comment to her about a demon octopus, something crazy. I don't know. I don't know. But Suzanne from Groovy Hues, being Suzanne from Groovy Hues was like, I could turn that into a yarn. No problem, Marina. And thus we received Satan's sticky arm side sidekick. Um, I love how rich these colors are. I'm struggling to get them to show true. Um, but they are really rich and bright colorways. It's almost like a Lisa Frank yarn super cool and I love the black speckles on it because that makes it to me seem a little bit less third grader um, and definitely something that I want to knit with I don't know what this is going to be no idea I bought it because demon octopus yarn okay around the time that the boys were about to get neutered same person Marina posted a meme of one of those hairless sphinx cats sitting on somebody's computer computer monitor in a compromising position uh, with his little kitty bits hanging out so somebody of course because she attracts all these people with interesting personalities commented that it was disgusting and how could she share such a thing and she's corrupting the internet and ruining things she's a ruiner um, so again, Suzanne was asked to dye yarn, and this is Oh the Tea Baggery on Chubby Sock. Not on Chubby Sock, sorry, on Chubby and Groovin. And this is a bulky weight yarn, and this is going to be a hat. So it'll be right up here on my head. Um, super excited to knit with this. This, I'm not even sure what it's going to be, uh, what hat it's going to be, but it's definitely going to be a hat. Um, and I'm excited that I was able to get the bulky base because that means that a bulky hat for me takes about two to three hours of knitting usually. Um, that means that I'll be able to have kind of an instant gratification project during the school year. I could knit this in a weekend and feel like I'm still accomplishing something um, even though I don't have as much knitting time during the school year. So excited. My final acquisition is from Groovy Hughes. Um, right now she's running an 80s movies club. Next year she's going to run a 90s movies club. And this is her take on Dirty Dancing. So she had the colorway name made into a sticker. And the sticker is just around the text. I thought it was a big white rectangle and I was confused. But it's just around the text and it's, I carried a watermelon. So we got a sticker. We got watermelon sour patches because watermelon 
And then we got this yarn inspired by Dirty Dancing. I'm going to take the ball band off so I can show you. This is I Carried a Watermelon, the Dirty Dancing yarn. Um, so something that I like about this is, I don't know if she did this intentionally or not, possibly, in addition to being a watermelon, it's got the color of baby's dress from that final scene, the iconic lift scene to I Had the Time of Your Life. And it looks like, to me, the dark green with the light, or sorry, the light green with the dark green speckles looks to me like summer trees. So I don't know if that was intentional or not, Suzanne, but I see it. Maybe the white is the kids that she wore. Hmm. I don't know, but this is I Carried a Watermelon. It's a Dirty Dancing inspired yarn. I saw somebody knitting socks with it and it does that micro striping thing. Um, so maybe this will be mitts because I don't do socks that much. Maybe I'll suck it up and make it into socks, but it's beautiful. I already have next month's. This was June's. I already have July's, but I'm waiting. Um, until the next podcast to show it just in case on the off chance that there's somebody in the club who didn't get theirs yet. I'm pretty sure everybody got them. Um, but I just want to be sure that I don't spoil movie club for somebody. I'm probably not going to do the nineties movies club because, um, I didn't see that many movies as a kid. My mom wasn't a big movie person, so I don't have a lot of the same sentimental attachment that a lot of people have to these movies. So I'm going to save the spaces for somebody else because when she released the eighties movies club, um, it sold out really fast. So I'm hoping that somebody else will get a chance. I might try to do the, the holiday end of year holiday ones. She's got for that. I believe Hocus Pocus for Halloween. She's not sure on the Thanksgiving movie. She originally said Dutch, but I've never seen that. I don't know what it's about. Thanksgiving. Um, and then the final one is um, Home Alone. So those that those two that I've seen, I'm excited about. And I really want to have the opportunity to see what Suzanne comes up with based on that movie inspiration. So we'll see. Um, yeah, so. I think that's it. Um, pretty short recording. I haven't done that much knitting except on my fading point, so I don't have a lot to talk about. Um, yeah, but thank you all for watching. Again, if you liked what you saw, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. We're at 95 subscribers and I do have a giveaway prize for 100 subscribers. So um, that is something that we can do. And yeah, remember in your interactions out there in the fiber world and elsewhere, oops, not ouch. So watch out for your intent versus your impact. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.